is the Musketeer Coaches Show. It is right here at Bob Rose Point after. Curtis Anderson with you, along with the head coach of the Sioux City Musketeers. That's Luke Strand. And he's in town. Ta- he's he walked here from St. Louis. Do you think that this just happens? <laughs> <laughs> this that's a magic look. look. Aren't you happens? glad we got the camera working? Oh boy, that's right, Jake's here. <laughs> Jake is here. Can we edit a couple of things? Right. Lloyd May is with us. He is start, start, one of our fine owners. Start with the t shirt. The t shirt right. just won before I die. Right. The, that is the team motto of the Detroit Lions. And that's why my question won what? I think at this point it might be a playoff win. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's. I think uh, uh, people's expectations are starting to. Uh, Scott Mitchell, did he win a playoff? Scott yeah. Mitchell. You're talking about Eric Kramer. No, I was going uh, the left handed kind of. Chuck. Yeah, Eric Kramer was the last. He won. One. He won one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did Scott Mitchell win one? They were no. highly rated no. under Wayne Fonts. Yeah, um, you know, under Cocaine Wayne. They, I just <laughs> know him as a big old uh, cigar smoker. Right. All right. Anyways, we are talking Sioux City Musketeer hockey. Uh, if you uh, been hanging out under a rock, you um, will let you know that they qualified for the postseason after a long run of uh, in. Injuries for months and months. They got healthy at the right time. And it was scary because um, the, the teams they played to, to make the playoffs or something special. This last week, the Musketeers, they traveled to Waterloo in a 6-3 victory over the second-place team there. And then Friday, they had a game against Tri-City. That's where the clincher was, 4-2 over the Anderson Cup winning Tri-City Storm. Coach Luke Strand, Coach... Um, Congrats to Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett in the, in the victory last night? Yeah, big time. Or are you just a big uh, Tony Bennett, the singer Clinton, fan? Clintonville, Wisconsin. Oh, Jesus. Boy, so if someone drove through Wisconsin, is that good enough for him? <coughs> Probably not. Yeah, Aren't okay. you from Minnesota? Yeah. I've mm-hmm. driven through Minnesota, Minnesota and Wisconsin. We don't give you any credit. Goodness. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Right. I Build the wall between on the <laughs> oh Hudson side and the... We've already got a wall, us Michigan natives. Big lakes. <laughs> You've got lakes. <laughs> you got moats. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the feeling, though, of, of getting it done, and how, how was it uh, for the team getting it done when you found out you clinched after the game on Friday, yeah, it was uh, you know, yeah, um, well, one being at home, um, that was a big deal. It's, it's great fans, by the way. Great fans, an unbelievable crowd on Friday. Um, kind of the consummate uh, putting the the band back together between our team and just the fans. I mean, we got to figure our, our schedule's been a little bit road warriorish here, and um, so to have that crowd there, and uh, I thought we played a, a good game, and as the time was dwindling down, and we had an opportunity. One, we had the sled hockey team out there, which was an amazing, uh, awesome opportunity for those young people to come out and join us, and then uh, us to join them, And but then for our, our guys to still be on the ice when the when the score was read that uh, Omaha had lost, and obviously with our win, that put us in the playoffs. You guys were injured for three months. You slowly get back and get healthy again, just in time to have that brutal schedule where you got dinged up in a very short lineup on Friday to get the win. Yeah, Friday was a, <coughs> excuse me. a little skeleton crew-ish. Um, we had, I think we had 10 forwards, and we had our 7D, which is a huge asset, whether uh, you just get to play your guys. But uh, we were we were dinged up. The Waterloo game knocked out a few guys. And, you know, there you watch Steinman's plays the home game there against, against Try. And... <coughs> How many shifts did he get? Uh, bless the kid. You know what the scary part is? His shift count was like six. His shot blocks were four. <laughs> and he couldn't move his arm. No. Well. He's got another arm. Yeah, well, that's how he sees it. So, But that was uh, kind of our team in a, in a nutshell, and, and um, happy to win that game. Let's go back to Tuesday, and it doesn't happen very often on their ice. Their home ice advantage at Waterloo is something special. They were playing and still are playing for um, a first-round bye, which is very important uh, for them if they have the opportunity to get there. And uh, a huge win. I mean, it was uh, it was a, that was a monster that, that – Especially after three games and three nights. Three games, three nights. I think uh, you you come back and, and you know 
thankfully, obviously Lloyd here being here, but thankfully ownership let us travel the night before. We were able to get over there. We were able to practice for the first time ever in Waterloo, the, the, the game day there on Tuesday, and um, huge difference for us. Uh, just you get, to, you get to be on the rink. You get to do some things that were pressure-free, and uh, they were very meaningful to our group, and uh, the aura and, and the way about our group going into that game, there, there wasn't a whole lot of doubt laying around about it, actually. If you look at the last, those last two games you played to clinch, second place Waterloo, first place Tri-City, and uh, beat them by at least a couple goals, both of them. Um, and you're shorthanded, because I think you got shorthanded from Fargo as well. Correct. I mean, it's nuts. I mean, that's that has to show you what this team is made of. It is. Uh, you know, uh, just our schedule down the, down the track here was hard. It was uh, difficult. But we've kind of all as a group just said, you know, iron sharpens iron, and you <laughs> get after it and make uh, ourselves better by who we play. And I think our game has really cleaned up. Obviously, personnel helps a lot. Um, I would almost say purpose helps a lot as well. And, and, uh, and then you get players the week three times in a row, Bobby Brink helps a lot as well. 1.6 points a contest on the season. Just think if he had 18 more games. In I it. heard a little something like it's the highest uh, points per game in league history right now. He's ahead of Matthews, so I don't I don't know the truth behind that at all. I gotta probably do some digging. With on that. twenty plus games, you know, or, a real season. Or Jake does, <coughs> but yeah, it's um, it's an amazing feat. Mm. I think he's won and passes too at uh, one like four yeah. or something. So uh, those guys have played and they played well and. Um, you know, and you can't discredit Marcus. So obviously, Kelly and Kelly on that line has been clutch and scoring. And um, what's ended up happening again is you end up getting focus put on that group, and others are free as well. Yeah, it, it obviously it's it's you've been saying band back together, and it's it really has from that side to your D that's been as healthy over the last couple of weeks as any. Knock on wood is right. That's. Uh, because that was huge, obviously, defining against a very high-scoring Waterloo team. And then, shoot, I'm sorry, Tri-City is scoring four, four goals a game, too, by the way. Yeah, you <laughs> figure, you know, that try, try, Fargo. <laughs> try, Fargo. It's, there you go. I, I think the only team we played since <laughs> Waterloo, <laughs> Tri <laughs> Waterloo and Tri-City. I think, I think the only and team. Fargo. And Fargo. Fargo's on Sunday. We, yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. You can pretty much just rinse, repeat our schedule for the last two months of the season. But it, you know, I don't know how that happened, but it did. Yeah, it, it was good though. I mean, this um, one, uh, you know, to your point, our D being healthy. One, I th uh, the other part there would be our our forwards getting healthy to really, <coughs> really help and, and and make our D confident that they can stay up. And our D, our forwards are reloading and getting on the top of pucks and uh, making our team pretty resilient. In the idea we we haven't given up a lot scoring chance wise or even shots as far as that goes. Unless you're in Waterloo, which every shot it comes for two for them. Or any any um, even Dawson. puck into yeah I was yeah. gonna say any the any goal, chips. The only can touch the unwall puck. It's gonna count as a shot on goal. So <laughs> whatever. I don't think Cross is gonna complain. That's great save no, percentage. It's, it's, Cross, it's, by the way, finish with Cross. By yeah, the way, Cross because has been dynamite. he is he's. Right where you so, want. You know what? Uh, you you close your eyes, think back a year ago. He finished the year on top of the the hill as far as how his play was, and he's right back to it right now. And um, it'll be a clear this time of year. It's a goaltending defense uh, wins you things, and then you just gotta clean it up with you with your forward and, and get some really specific um, characteristics of how your team plays. We're talking Musketeer hockey. Uh, they got two games left in the regular season, then they get to the postseason. We'll talk about that, uh, Lloyd. And from from afar or near, because you're here and there, mm -hmm. um, how tough was it to, to watch this this group of coaching staff keep this team alive through that futility of injury? I have not come across that many injuries of top players, and I've been doing it. Uh, I don't know, this is 17 years, years, something like that. Right. I well, mean, it just doesn't happen. It, it, the answer and to might, keep them alive. Well, the answer might surprise you, but you know there was definitively a. I'd say a sense of calm in the room. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think the staff panicked. I don't think anybody started looking for a reason to cry in their soup. I think it was I think there was comfort knowing that when we were back we were a good team. And eight and two in the last ten mm -hmm. proves that theory and I think you know, it is obviously it's hard to struggle with a lot of injuries, especially some that maybe you don't know the timetable for return. And then obviously you know, a pretty key suspension in there, sprinkled in, but I didn't get the sense at all that there was any panic, any band-aid. It was a real next man up ment mentality. 
preached over and over again. I think that's what you saw out of the kids, and they weathered it. You know, obviously didn't have the success that a fully healthy team is going to have during that time, but the, 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 the players stepped up. Coaches were calm, knew where we wanted to be, um, and I think we're in a spot right now. Just getting into the dance is probably enough for us to do what we want to do. Well, look at look at uh, three weeks ago. <clears throat> I think teams going to, over to Omaha with a one-point lead, and you look at what Omaha had the rest. I mean, no offense to the, the schedules, but we're talking Tri City, Tri City, like we just got done saying. Right. It had to favor Omaha all the way, and it had to start with a win over Omaha for Sioux City to get the nod. Yeah, and I, you know, that's, when you look at games like that, those are markers during the season where you can point to it and say, this is one where we figured it out. Uh, had, a, had a game early in the year. We were up on Waterloo big. Going into that was a yeah. definer. Right, it was a definer in, in a positive way in terms of growth. You looked around the room at the end of that night, and there were a bunch of kids that said, oh, wow, in, in the USHL, yeah. you can't sit back. That what caused we, some internal combustion right there. It did. <laughs> what, did, what did we rip off after that? Uh, like nine, nine yeah. in a row after nine that. Well, because you guys were 12-4 and something. Uh, November 27th, you guys were in first place. Yeah, it was nine. I think it was nine straight wins after that. And I, I remember talking to some of the other broadcasters saying, no one can touch this team of yours. <laughs> Wait, injury can happen. And, and injury, World Junior A, World Juniors, um, suspension, everything else. And talk about adversity. Um, no one's come through this much adversity this year. And now coming out on in this spot right now and how dangerous. I think that as a, as a group is, is a point um, any championship team goes through adversity. I mean, it's a conversation we'll have before we enter is is the importance of like, you know, you're, you're never out till you're out. Um, and we, we, we felt like our head was underwater for longer than we should have been. Um, <laughs> But and the other part about this is just growth, individual growth, and players got to play in minutes. They got to situations, and um, you know whether you see some of that happen for us this year, you're going to definitely see it in the future. Like you, you, you put some guys in some spots to um, have opportunity to be successful, and you know for the most part, I would say guys took advantage of it, and the guys that didn't learn from it, and, and will do the next time they have that opportunity again. How far as Krenz and come and passing and come? You dealt with four defensemen. Or was it four or five games? <laughs> yeah. It was eleven. It was ten forwards and forty. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was. You know, but and then I think you, the other part. You, you should never have too many men on the ice. You, you, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it happened though. Yeah, and, and, and Lincoln. Never, it did, yes, it did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Never doubt us for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, we, you give us the challenge. I'll, I'll, never, I'll never forget it. Like any, many, mighty more. There's only four of you to choose from. One of you guys actually went on the ice extra. But um, and then I think the other the other side of this uh, is our affiliates. Uh, the, the the affiliates have stepped up, played. Uh, they've jumped in, kind of simply helicoptered in in a lot of ways. <laughs> um, Dusty's only averaging two goals a game. <laughs> and uh, and the idea that they've come in and, and really um, one I think our 40 man camp, which we've alluded to internally um, what that does for our group and the comfortability amongst each other uh, but two that a player can can really get out of a car walk in the room be on par right right now same page bang and then jump in and play and be supported by their teammates in doing so Beyondy, Stang, Tussie, I mean, it's um, really been been a good shot in the arm when guys have come over, and then uh, you got other guys that need to get healthy right now. But it's it, it's it's really interesting right now how far this team has come, and now two games left and still get the clinch. I thought, God forbid, you'd have to actually beat Sioux Falls or something silly like that to get in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, I'm just kidding, because your record right now is just not very good against Sioux yeah. Falls. Well, right. I'd like to play in full strength. It'd be fun. Yeah. It'd yeah. be all right. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Um, one more thing before I take a break, because I don't think there's enough to be said about this, is Bobby Brink factor. 1.6 points a contest. Three straight weeks as forward of the week. Five total, which ties the record. Three in a row is a record. Um... Is there anything uh, else to be said of how amazing so far his career has been, whether it was with Team USA winning, 
uh, MVP and everything in between. Yeah, I mean, MVP, gold medal, um, <coughs> doing what he's done individually here, but he's almost at the same time, um, the growth he's just shown as a teammate in, um, and just being uh, just a class kid. Like, he, he has, no one knows, but, like, here Bobby Brink is full-time student, accelerated in school. Um, it's full and a half. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> time, half. time and a half load. Um <laughs> He deals with every NHL team in in the in the league to come in and do interviews. Um, and, oh, by the way, he's you know was out for two months with a broken ankle, <laughs> and then to top it off, he's come back and, and not not missed a beat. And, and the kid's a rink rat, loves the game, and uh, I'll tell you, he also is showing up more and more about Levin like where he's at. He loves being here in Sioux City. One more thing on Brink, too, Coach. Um, someone asked me that either today or the last couple of days. When he was either drafted or whether he was coming to camp in the past, did you know how good he could be? Uh, yeah, I mean, there. I mean, that's going to sound arrogant, but yeah, I mean, the, the idea now. Do you do you expect it to come as a junior in high school? I, I think he might be ahead of the curve as far as when when it happened. Um, but you got to figure last year, those 13 games he played with us at the end of the year, um, and then he had a chance to go play with USA in the playoffs, and just those. I think we're just kind of like spearheaded what he wants to be. You got to figure back in the fall, there was still a strong chance he wasn't staying here all year. Mm -hmm. Going back to high school for he, another. He, he had the opportunity to go back to high school and, and captain a uh, Minnesota State Championship team and, and opted to stay here because he wants to be a hockey player, not a friend of a hockey player. Right, it's a mature decision to make. And, you know, obviously he's done really well in the league this year, but being around your high school friends in, in that community is supposed to be the best days of your life. Oh, well, because uh, you started playing at four right. or five start years playing, with these same kids. You know, it, the, the radio's full of songs yeah. of guys that are talking about their high school football days. Mm -hmm. um, and to know that you have a chance to do something special with your life that helps fulfill your dreams and have to make a difficult decision to be able to do it, that speaks to the maturity that he has as an individual. Yeah, the 17 year old has got to make a lifelong decision. Right. It's a pretty big, impactful way of, of thinking about this. Mm -hmm. By the way, he's helped the team a little bit. Uh, he leads the league in game-winning goals at 9, too, by the way. I keep, keep forgetting this. Some, there's always another stat what, what, I can throw in what's there. What's he scored, 37 goals? He's uh, 35. Okay, that too. So he's got a strong chance that some of those are going to be game winners. <laughs> right. But right. he, to your point, though, he doesn't score the fluff goal. He doesn't. Um, no, when it's needed. When you it's know, we see, we see some people out there, there's nothing wrong with it, that taps in an empty netter here and there or what have you, and those are fine, so but when it's needed. <laughs> that column doesn't exist, by the way. Right. It's called goals. <laughs> those right. are still those goals? Yeah. How, okay, then I'll throw in, how about the guy who had a hat trick, including a shorthander and the game winner in a game this year? As the clock ticks? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. I'm with right. you. And, you know, um, uh, just a special guy because he, there he is. He wants to get better every day. He makes our team better every day because he goes out to practice and with a focus and a mindset that making you better is going to be what he wants to do. Right. So let's get a break in. We'll come back. We're going to talk uh, who's playing this weekend and who's not. And uh, and then we'll talk about uh, when possible, who, and all that kind of good stuff, who they could possibly play. We'll be right back. This is the Musketeer Coaches Show. It's right here on Fox Sports Radio 620. Cam and us. The Musketeer Coaches Show is right here at Bob Rose Point After. It's brought to you by Knife River, also Sioux City Ford. Curtis Anderson with you, along with the head coach of the Sioux City Musketeers and Luke Strand and one of our fine owners and Lloyd Nay. We're talking Musketeer hockey, and it's uh, two more games in the regular season. Um, you are either going to play Waterloo or Sioux Falls, and that's up to them. You are going to be in that final spot, in the sixth spot. You'll have to travel to them. Rest or no rest, what 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 are you looking at for these two games? And they're two very good opponents. Both. Rest and no rest. I, maybe a split or 
one game, not another game, or what? Not overly wanting to say it publicly what, what the plan is. I, I can tell you, like, our, our guys are going to play. Um, the guys are dinged up, might not. But there's some guys that are dinged up that uh, have been limping along here that are not going to play because this Brownsy, is Brownsie, Nelson, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, the four extra days between not playing and traveling and getting into a round one are, are pretty big days. Right. How about uh, between Crosby and Cybell? Well, uh, you'd love, to, I mean, you know, you'd love to see. I, I, I think Crosby wants a couple live bullets involved here, and mm -hmm. um, healthy wise, that, that's good for us. And Sibes and, and, you know, Aiden Harper's here, and I uh, wouldn't be shocked to see Harp stop a few pucks here along the way as well. I know you wanted to get him in. in been wanting to bad. The kids are going to be a really good goalie, and, and the hard part is, like, you, the timing of, of as this thing's rolled on. You know, no one's, no one knows it, but here's Harps. He finishes his midget season at the end of February, shows up here basically beginning of March, a little before the beginning of March, <coughs> jumps in both feet, is a practice, like, warrior because anything that the other two aren't really up for wanting, <laughs> he's in there. Um, goes about his business day to day, a terrific young man and wants to be a better person, better goalie all the time, and a guy we'll see here in a Sioux City uniform in the future. Yeah, he did. Didn't he play up in Fargo? He did. He, he came in, and uh, that was early in the year. We needed a, a goalie. He came in, backstopped the third period, went up no goals. He was a good job. And he was he was an affiliate, so it wasn't an emergency situation. Correct. It we, was used, just... we used affiliate uh, goalie instead of an emergency situation. And so Harps is uh, committed to UMass Lowell, and um, the, the fine line of goalies that have come through Lowell is is another one of Cam's guys along the way <laughs> that Cam you know, put in there before he left. You uh, look at these guys. Uh, how is the situation with them right now? And I guess it de to be determined after the season. But um, is is Groundsy coming along? Is Millsy coming along? Is um, I would say Millsy's day to day, Steiny's day to day, closer to being better than than not. They skated. I can tell you that Groundsy has not skated. Uh, Bakes, you'll I'm certain you'll probably see Niamh and you'll see back in the lineup. Um, you'll see some affiliates, uh, Mason Langenburner. Um, you'll see affiliate John Bell. You'll see affiliate Blake Biondi, affiliate Noah Tussie. You're going to see some guys. Jimenez. And uh, Jimenez just finished his season, and, and because he's been out with, with this whole deal, I don't know if we're going to get him back. He is a callable player back. He's on a – there's a list of players that are that are dry, that are playoff eligible. Mm -hmm. He is he is on that list. So um, if that position becomes of need, he's uh, we, we back that position up. He's he a nice player. Did, oh, yeah, he'll be – I mean, he's, another, he's stuck in there real another, quick, fast. Another good one that we'll see here in the future as well for sure. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk more about uh, who's playing and who isn't when we get towards these games. Obviously, this weekend we might just see a filler here and you're there. You're going to see some, and you're going to see some guys get some minutes they need, and you're going to see some guys that um, I want to protect. I mean, the suspension thing holds over. The th Those actions of other players towards a player hold over. I don't think you can control an injury unless someone's going in there half a tenant for what they're doing. So we're going to attack it, um, but then we're going to be smart about it. Uh, you can leave it up to some of the players that because I mean it's hard to hard to hold them out sometimes I can barely leave up like what shoes they were I don't think <laughs> playing is going to be left up to them very much <laughs> right. with that right you can't get a menu item off that of was them. a PG version of uh -huh. answer I understand mm -hmm. yeah so um, no uh, what, do we have dates yet um, and we in do. dates against either Sioux Falls or dates against Waterloo Waterloo dates
Sioux City because all their parents brought all their kids to the games on Tuesday night Perfect. and Wednesday night. That, is, it a, is, it a, is it a city hall holiday? <laughs> yeah, we talked to uh, Coach uh, Bob Scott, our, our fine mayor. To, we might need to talk to Bob. Yeah. As long as after they have a playoff game, we get the day off for the yeah. kids for them, too. Right. Right. Yeah. We're happy to have two parades at once. <laughs> well, and then uh, we'll come back for the parade for the Explorers after mm-hmm. that. Let's just call it all good, you know. City of Champions. Yep. Yes, that that is all right. So it's going to happen fast. Right. There's no wasting time. So you guys, again, have to be healthy and ready then. 11 games. Um, you know those quick games? You have to win 11 games. 11 games? Mm-hmm. Does that work there? Two plus three plus three plus three and you are from minnesota and you got to 11 i'm proud of you uh, yeah uh, that's, that's good i i it's a very bloomington math version right there <laughs> it's, you it's, didn't even use your fingers i was impressed two plus yeah i was probably looking on the paper of some kid from sheboygan or something that's probably like where that. they invented common core uh, <laughs> yes. I, and i have a calculator on the yeah, laptop here slide it's, those beads down the <laughs> That might have been how it started there. Yep. But uh, that is a quick turnaround. Boy, you guys aren't used to playing a lot of games in a short amount of time. So no, I don't know. not at all. <laughs> I mean, that's the other part about this. You got to figure we just played, you know, threes and threes, fours and fives, fives and five games and seven nights. Um, why not? And the rhythm of playing sometimes when you're playing well is even the, the most welcome thing you can get. Mm. Right. And, you know, it's uh, an old friend of ours used to say it's the bubble. You know, you start the uh, playoffs and you go in the bubble. And it's all you think about. And sometimes when you can get that regular rhythm to it, you know, it's uh, the focus. Just the one the breath off every totally. couple. Totally. I think you'd probably prefer two off day one, something like that. Yeah, well. Whatever. The number, get, the number you, of players that we've used this year, <laughs> like not traded for but just used within our group, pretty high. Uh, it's a pretty high number. I'll be honest now, and I look at a lot of those other teams, you don't have a lot of guys you traded for. No. I mean, um, you know, added bonus at the end type of thing. Yep. I think Josh Boyer has been a, a really nice factor. And uh, and then obviously Devlin, when he's helped you out as yep. well, has been a really nice factor. That's it. I mean, they, they might have been on other teams last year, like Lambeau and stuff like yep. that, but that was last year, not this year. Correct. Brownsy was at Omaha last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's part of, I think, what you um, eventually want to manage into, that your, your internal group, like, refreshes and refills your group, and it happened, and the, the future's bright that way. We just had, you know, Joel Mata wins the U18 Finnish Championship. Stutzel wins the U20 German Championship. Campbell wins the U16 National Championship. Like, these are all our kids. We have state championship and John Bell. Like, uh, these kids are all coming down the pipe, coming our way, and they've already been winners which is a huge, huge part of what you want to bring in. Winners is kind of interesting. That's always, uh, we've always described okay, on the local sports, and obviously you got to meet um, Steve Ryan, the head coach of the Morningside Mustangs. Most of his guys on that team were state champions or state runners-up. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't about, it was about winners. And right. there's there's a different definition between winners and, and, and super athletic. <laughs> Coach Ryan actually could bring those football boys out to a home game on a Tuesday and a Wednesday night for... Hey. A night off from training. Right. <laughs> spring, right. spring, uh, yeah, we'll spring give practice. Yeah, another spring training table. Because <laughs> right. right. it is springtime. Yeah. And there, he's not working in them at all, I'm guessing. What a, what a guy. <laughs> well, you know, if he, if he is listening and he, you know, is going to bring the team by maybe on a weeknight for a uh, playoff game, we'd love to have him. And, you know, living in St. Louis, we have a few football players there that maybe we could give directions to Morningside College. Yep. There you <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Does that sound like a fair trade? I, I don't know. I, I it's it it sounds perfect. Is if there's going to be a pipeline, it might as well be a good one. Right, right. We don't want to send you to Mizzou right now. <laughs> yeah. We'd rather you go to Morningside. Come to College. Morningside. Bring them all up here. Right. If you're a winner. If you're only if you win. Yep. If you're if you're not, well, right. no. I. It's it's usually good character people, and that's there's something to be said about character. This bench, uh, this bus, is character. It's, it's kind of interesting because I always have my bus buddies because uh, I sit by them all the time. 
And a guy like, okay, let's just, just throw out there a guy that maybe is uh, hiding in the scenes is Elvin Nielsen. A kid like that, just a gentleman kid. He could be the nicest guy in the world, but he does not mind hitting anyone in the corner. And I think you have found where you need to fit him in on this team. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, <clears throat> but as far as character goes, like Nils is a 20 year old, um, played European championships. Like, it, there's a guy that's just uh, his charismatic and, and caring for all the other guys is pretty high end. And, and it goes right down that bus line. And that's important. What, what seat you sit on on the bus is a really important part of the bus going round and round. Another guy, and I can't beg for it enough, and he'll sooner or later get there on the goal-scoring list, Love Sean Bunting. How close was it? In Waterloo? No, at home. At home. You and I oh. were calling the game. Oh, God, so close. And we were begging. We were yeah, begging I know. For, for I can't, I've been goal. begging since then because in Waterloo I thought he had it too. Right. Uh, just work uh, ethic, work ethic, and, and um, you know a consummate teammate. There he is. He's on the bench. There is no one more vocal on the bench than Bunce. There's no one more excited for a player on our team than Bunce. He celebrates Spring goals, all 35 of them, like he scored them. <laughs> it don't matter. Like he's in. He's and, ready to make the circle. And, you know, there was a conversation with Bunce. Here's a quality kid. Like there's a conversation at Christmas time with Bunce. Like you're, you're not playing much here. We're really full because we were healthy. Mm -hmm. Mike, I don't know what this looks like down the path. Do you want to be here? Will you want to go somewhere that's going to get you more playing time? He's like, I I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here. Awesome. Here we go on the flip side of the ringer. There's the kid we're talking about. He's fighting his way back yeah, in the lineup. Sure. And, and how much have we seen him in the last two weeks? He's been good. He's been really good. He's been out of the box. He's a warrior. He's fought people. He's ch he checks. Whatever. And he, he's just uh, he's that guy. Yeah, you, you get these guys and you just see what they've done. And I already mentioned Boyer and what he's kind of given a stab. We've talked about Steinmetz. How about talk about Ian Malcolmson? Because Malky has played every position out there, and he's done it really, really well, and he's getting so much better. Yeah, Malky is a kind of a quiet um, to himself, gets the job done, doesn't really look left or right for anyone to give him a pat on the He's back. He's really good for a kid from Wisconsin, too. I know. It's one of those deals, I guess. And as far as the centerman goes, um, he's a natural. He's a defending centerman that you know, creates offense because of it. And for not a huge stature, the kid plays hard, heavy. And at the end of the day, like he's kind of an unsung guy because you end up plugging him into different spots, and he's been effective all of them. But Parker Ford on a wing, we talked about looking at that and the, when everybody's healthy too, putting them on the wing. And, and again, I, I can't say enough about some of these guys. We'll talk more about it. But Parker Ford, um, he, he would chop a finger off for you if you needed it. Yeah, he's pretty much cut his own finger off in spite <laughs> to try to do it. So um, it's one of those, I, you know, we took Fordo, put him on the wall. Um, th th that was that game in Waterloo. He has 10 shots. He has at least one goal, if not two goals. Two goals, one assist. Two goals, and an assist. That's all right. Ten shots, playing wing, and he, he just kind of, I think sometimes a little subtle change is good for good for those guys so they don't get um, maybe stalled out at what they're doing. And Fordo's a warrior. He's a competitive kid. And for a first-year player, one, and I know we're up against it a little bit, we'll talk more about some of these players and what they are. But Marcus Kelly and Kelly, and you're like, oh, you know, he's 27 goals, 23 assists. I don't know. I don't have the added points if he had any on Friday. He's a rookie. He's a high school kid. He's a, is he a junior, maybe? He's a junior in high school. Um, <coughs> a young man. It's funny because, uh, you know, a lot of people always want to compare the Finns to, to Tolvin and to Sambo and stuff like that. Those guys all did their thing over here in their draft year on their second year here. <laughs> yeah, Marcus, and, and, they're, and they're different players. Different players. In, different styles. And this kid is like, you know, never been away from home. Jumped in. Found his way. You know, did he go drive for a while? Sure. Should he have? Yes. Did he look exhausted? Beat down. Is he back to... You like that come around? He's turned it on beyond. Yeah. And, and the, that, that group, um, you know, you get a little bit of everybody. You get to bring Poss and, and Marcus. And it's funny. I, I'll hear someone say, like, hey, he's kind of a good passenger to those two. I'm like, well, you got to get open. And, and you got to shoot. And you got to score, he's right? Still to score. Yeah, you got to shoot, yeah. and he's got a shot. If he's got 27 posts, though, that's not—he's not sitting in that spot. 
6176 is that accurate still or is he put on eight because he looks on muscle weight uh, yeah there. he's he's gotten bigger he's probably that 185 range right around there right now and um this is year one you're like one. that he'll be an nhl pick and he'll be yeah. back here and um you know that's the other part about this time of year like these guys are all playing we we talk about it constantly you're playing for each other and the betterment for each other like at some point um if you were jake genzel's teammate you're cheering jake genzel on real Ridiculously right now. Oh yeah. Neil Pion, you're cheering those guys on. Adam Johnson, you're cheering those guys on all the time right now. Right. Like there's none of that group that's not cheering Carpe on for playoff success. And are you kidding? All, right. all those guys. I mean, so you know, now we get these players here that are having the success. They're going to end up on TV, and it's, it'll be a fun, uh, a fun message to share down the road. Yeah, I, I, uh, I talked to Brett Larson last night. For how's he doing? Great. Uh, I mean, it's a tough thing considered at a tough it, loss last amazing week. Amazing season, though. But he, uh, one thing he said that was interesting was he said this team that we have this year reminds him a lot of the year that Jake was here. That it took him a little bit to figure it out. They had some injuries. Made some and, trades. And by the end of the year, though. Well, when, Denzel had 72 point, or 73 points or whatever, but I think three quarters were after Christmas. That's my point. He said, <laughs> he, said he, 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 he said he felt like the team was peaking at the right time, that, they're, that they were coming together at the right time. Now, unfortunately, that year we were, we were kind of out of it quite a bit earlier. Came so close, I think it was right, right down to the finish. I, but I, I still remember this. I, I believe I was sitting in the locker room, and he's making, uh, Luke's making a phone call to, to Papa Genzel and says, by the way, I see a pick coming up, and I see your kid's name. What do you think? Okay, I'll take him. <laughs> that was pretty good. And what what is he weighing about 110 pounds then? It's five three one fifteen. Yeah, he was. I remember because I looked at the draft list and went, "We draft kids out of Bantam." It was a Bantam, and that back then you didn't draft Bantam right. players. So, yeah, it's. Uh, but that's that's the goal of our group. I mean, it's uh, uh, to your point, the bus, the the character, the people. Um, and I, I do think the band's pretty much back together. We've got we still have a little bit of fine tuning to do before we want to get after this and just make each other better doing it. Friday, Saturday on the road. Then remember, we'll let you know it's either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, depending on who they play. We'll have the auction 6:20 KM and SI Heart Radio and Hockey TV. That's going to do it. Bob Rose Point after Sioux City Ford and Knife River Fox Sports Radio 6:20 KM and S.